Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah Lamb, and welcome to the Smart Community Core Informational Webinar. It's great to have you on. Um, just a, a few housekeeping rules. Um, if, if you can please keep yourselves on mute and have your video off. Um, we have a slide deck that we want to share with you to go through the application and the process, as well as a number of great speakers that will um, help answer any questions and, and guide you through this. So it's a, it's a pretty good um, informational session for all of you um, to do this. So welcome and, and thank you. Uh, Let's start with the first slide, um, just to kick this off. Um, just uh, again, this session is recorded, so even if you can't stay for the whole time, or um, if you uh, want to go back to some some points, you are free to do it. We'll also have the slides available um, on the website, so you can refer to it. Um, during the course of this uh, session, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, type it on the chat box um, or on the Q&A box. We're, we're happy to look at both and we'll be monitoring both um, in that process. But um, we are excited for you to join and, and just thrilled by the extent and the level of interest um, that is happening with this uh, Smart Community Corps. So, um, Christy, next slide. Um, so just a quick introduction, um, I, I will be kicking it off uh, with a, a quick uh, overview of Georgia Smart and the Partnership for Inclusive Innovation. Then um, I'll have each of our speakers introduce themselves to save time, so I, I won't do too much of an introduction. But Christy Kirkland will then move on. She is our Smart Community Corps Manager, and she'll talk to you about the, the process of the application. Um, Corey Hawkins, who is our Microsoft uh, University lead, and, and he's going to say a few words as well. And of course, um, I think for the students here, we also are thrilled to invite an alumni, um, uh, Katie, who's been with us uh, and through the program uh, last year and is able to share some of her insight and experience. And lastly, we have Chris Chatfield from our one of our uh, key partners, Serve, Learn, and Sustain, um, talk to you about um, well, the programming aspect that they will lead as well. Um, like I said, we'll also have uh, a question and answer session, and we will take as many questions um, as we can during the time allocated. But if you have um, additional questions, um, feel free to email us, and, and we will try to be as responsive as we can. Um, next slide. So just a little bit of a background. Um, this is called the Smart Community Core, and uh, it's important just to get this as the background is we think um, smart is a process. It's, it's a way for uh, communities to engage with different tools, um, processes, hardware, software, um, uh, uh, applications um, to improve in the quality of life. Um, and, and we really think that's part of a strong community partnership. Um, and that you don't need to be limited by a city um, in that strong a jurisdiction geographic sense. As, as long as you, you are thinking about the process and, and the different tools and techniques and applications that can go into a, a project to address uh, the um, improving the whole quality of life or the human condition, it can happen at a community level, at a mega region level, or even at the building level. And, and so that's very much part of our framework. It's, it's very much process driven and how we approach um, working with our communities in terms of building that strong partnership and that co-creation and uh, recognizing that SMART can happen at all levels um, of, of uh, the community. Next slide. So what came out of this process is the background is the Georgia Smart Community Challenge. It's still the first of its kind, and it is a program that's really supported um, by bringing multidisciplinary research from Georgia Tech to try to work with the community in a co-creation sense to improve um, uh, and uh, make a difference in the community uh, for impact. Next slide. It really is trying to position Georgia Tech um, and Georgia as a leader in, in uh, the smart development and allow um, a series of different projects that could happen over the course of the year. Um, next slide. 
And to this day, we're thrilled that there are 12 projects across the state. Um, we've been able to impact about two thirds of the state um, in terms of our stakeholder engagement and our involvement with the partners. Um, this year, uh, we have four projects that are highlighted and I'll, I'll share with you more in the next slide, but you can tell that these projects are, are representative of how we think about SMART so they can happen in large, um, larger communities. Um, the Chatham County project, um, Chatham County is a million plus population. And then we can have them in smaller cities. Milton um, has about uh, 25,000. People. So it, it really just represents um, projects inside the Metro Atlanta core urban model, but also the rest of the state and smaller communities um, um, everywhere. So each project is a different type of smart city project, but all kind of represent um, our thinking and principle around smart cities. Next slide. This year's projects were was chosen through a pretty competitive process. So we have um, Clayton County, Sandy Springs, Savannah, and Valdosta. Uh, they each are um, working with uh, the community as well as a team of Georgia Tech researchers. Uh, the project started in the fall and will end uh, next August, um, early September. Um, so then we are operating kind of at the midterm right now in terms of where the projects are. But you can see in Savannah, we're working on a uh, civic data science project uh, with affordable housing. Um, in Clayton and Sandy Springs, it's around mobility and transportation. Um, and then in Valdosta, it's kind of thinking about uh, a stronger communication system um, to manage traffic flow. Uh, again, very different projects, different locations, um, but all following uh, a partnership principle with a Georgia Tech research team working with the community over the course of the year. Um, next slide. So one of the things that I think we're cognizant being at Georgia Tech and the public university that we are is our strategic plan. And, and this is really set forth by President Cabrera who is looking at developing leaders who advance technology and improve the human condition. Um, we very much support that and are in service to that. Um, we developed Georgia Smart as a recognition of that. But one thing that we wanted to focus on is as much as uh, Georgia Smart was focused on community research and what Georgia Tech researchers can do with the community and co-creation, what is something that could really drive uh, student leadership and student education? And how can we make experiential learning into the next level? We are of the mindset that you, know, you can learn about smart cities and, and this type of work in the classroom, or you can be on the forefront doing it um, on a project and, and really be part of that project um, as part of that learning. Um, and that working and living in the community uh, is something that we want to uh, encourage and highlight, um, especially um, as part of our broader support with work across the state. So next slide, we actually spent um, the past uh, background is the past uh, year before we developed the Smart Community Corps, actually uh, engaging in research. So we wanted to know, you know, what's the best way to engage with students? How can we prepare students to lead smart cities? And how can we better support um, communities? And, and we took a lot of best practices from other student fellowship programs um, and kind of developed our own, uh, which is where Smart Community Corps comes in. And we, next slide, we also thought about the best timing to do this. So in our Georgia Smart program, like I said earlier, the project started in the fall um, and won't uh, finish until the next fall. So the summer is actually the last uh, focused crunch of uh, pushing forward on the project before um, the final presentations and work. So we decided to really focus on that period of time um, as a prime for project development and project work and project experience and develop a full-time summer fellowship um, for students to be based um, on that project, but working very closely with uh, the community and of course the Georgia Tech researchers on that project. So next slide. Lo and behold, then we launched the Smart Community Tour. This is our third year running it. So we've had um, essentially uh, almost 20 students that have gone through this program. 
Um, and you know, each year I can say we we improve and develop more more um, uh, more effective programming that's better for the students and of course more impactful for the communities. Um, you'll hear more about the details um, for this round, um, but we're just very thrilled that you know we are we continue to be offering this as a very unique experience. Where again, uh, a couple of things that make this special is that the students are you know in a paid full-time fellowship they're working and and hopefully um being part of the community and uh really learning and driving that smart city project especially on the tail end of the smart um city project um under georgia smart um so it's a it's a really intensive but, but uh, i would say rewarding experience for the students um and we're really delighted that you're here um, let me uh, introduce our next speaker, uh, and one of the things that makes this Smart Community Core worthwhile is that we do this in partnership with Microsoft. Um, and so this is uh, with funding that's supported from Microsoft to be provided for the paid fellowships. Um, and so I want to introduce Corey um, and have him say a few words. Corey? Thanks, Deborah, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and to speak with you and to learn more about this great partnership. We're really excited to uh, partner with the Smart Community Corps. Um, I'm a part of a team at Microsoft called University Relations, and we work with about 22 schools around the United States and Canada. And here in the Atlanta area, we work with, in addition to Georgia Tech, Morehouse College, Spelman College, and Clark Atlanta University. So we're really looking forward to this partnership and learning from you and, and growing and um, you know, I, we hope to continue to be a partner and to help out in any way. So thanks again and um, welcome. Great, thanks so much, Corey. Um, I'm Christy Kirkland and I am the manager of Smart Community Core. So I wanna uh, take a little time now to actually talk about the program itself. Um, these are just some of the benefits of our program. Um, you will get to gain work experience um, working in a local government in a working on a smart community project. Um, it is a paid internship and up to $8,000 stipend depending on the location um, of your project. Uh, this year we are using a project pair model where at Georgia, uh, there'll be two students and with each of the projects one Georgia Tech student and one uh, student from another Georgia University. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, you'll get to work with a professional and research mentor on the program. Uh, we also um, provide seminars and educational programming throughout the summer um, through um, Serve, Learn, Sustain and other um, programming efforts. And you will have support from our staff um, throughout uh, the summer. And lastly, it is a great net networking opportunity um, to uh, within your cohort, uh, the wider alumni, um, and as well as the Georgia Smart uh, community. So this is kind of our Georgia um, Community Corps timeline. Uh, right now, we are accepting applications, and that will go through um, February 26th, which is the deadline. Uh, once uh, that passes, we will do selected interviews during the month of March uh, with the communities. Uh, they, we will then uh, choose the finalists, and they will be notified um, on or around March 17th. Um, and then the actual internship will go through uh, May 17th uh, through August 6th. And then at the end, in September, we ask that our uh, alumni come back and uh, join us for our George Smart final presentations in September. As I mentioned, some of our programming um, during the summer comes from Science for Georgia and uh, Serve, Learn, Sustain. So here are some of the Smart Community Core uh, program requirements. Uh, we do require that you commit to the entirety of the 12 week uh, program, again, which runs, uh, it's actually May 17th through August 6th. Um, you will participate in a weekly Serve, Learn, Sustain seminar uh, that meets virtually. Um, you will also set up program goals with your placement supervisor, including your hours and work location. Right now, because of COVID, you know, we're, we're hoping that you can work on location, but we know that we may have to pivot to virtual um, like we did in the summer of 2020. Uh, you will also be required to submit monthly progress reflections um, to SMART 
cities, and you will also um, be required to write a blog on your reflection at the end of the internship. You will also participate in weekly, monthly meetings um, with your mentor, uh, depending on how you set that up at the beginning. And you also, at at least one week during the summer, take over our Twitter account um, to kind of talk about um, the project that you're working on. And lastly, you'll present a, um, prepare and present a midterm and a final project presentation of your completed uh, project. So as I mentioned earlier, this year we are doing the uh, pair model, which will place uh, one Georgia Tech student along with a, Georgia, uh, a student from another Georgia university to work together on a project. Um, so we'll have two interns in each of the Georgia SMART communities, Clayton County, Sandy Springs, Savannah, and Valdosta. Then we also have one more project, the Socially Aware Mobility Lab project, and we'll have two um, interns working on that project as well. Um, the internship is open to both undergraduate and graduate students of all majors. So now um, I'd like to turn it over to Katie Pop, who was, um, a Smart Community Corps intern for the city of Woodstock um, last year and let her talk a little bit about her experience. Thanks so much, Christy. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So hi everyone. Um, my name is, oh, there's some feedback. Can you make sure that we're all muted? Okay, perfect. Um, hi everyone, my name is Katie Pop. I am a first semester graduate student in civil engineering. Um, as Christy mentioned, I was part of the 2020 Smart Community Core um, cohort, and I'm going to share a bit about my experience so that you can see kind of what it's like to be part of this really unique internship program. Um, so last summer, I worked with City of Woodstock, and uh, my project specifically was working on a Smart Woodstock Master Plan. Um, my role was essentially to conduct research on feasible smart city technologies for the downtown Woodstock area, which has been growing immensely over the past 10 years. So this is a very, um, very applicable project that they are hoping to implement uh, very soon. So the Smart Community Core was essentially a specific intersection of all my interests, being conducting research, working for local government, and also being part of a multidisciplinary team. Uh, the opportunity seems almost too good to be true because I'm actually from Woodstock. And so as soon as I saw this job posting, I knew I had to apply um, just because this is my hometown and seeing the opportunity to do something I love um, and serve the place that I grew up was something I really wanted to do. So I mainly worked with um, the city of Woodstock planning department under Katie O'Connor, who is the senior city planner. But um, because of the nature of the project being part of the Georgia Smart uh, Cities Initiative, uh, I also worked with transportation planning and engineering consultants, um, other planners in Woodstock, and also a Georgia Tech researcher, um, Steve. So I really got to learn about their roles in the project and really benefited from um, all their expertise and support over the whole summer. So uh, I have an engineering background and more often than not, we're taught that the most efficient solution is the best solution, but working at a local government really showed the importance of engaging with the community and really finding solutions that are the best fit for the unique needs of Woodstock. So it taught me the social side of engineering that I don't really get in um, a lot of my technical classes in civil engineering. So as Christy mentioned, um, an additional part of being part of the Smart Community Corps is that you are in the Serve, Learn, Sustain summer internship program, which um, honestly is one of my favorite parts of the summer. Uh, so in addition to working with the Smart Woodstock team, I met with SLS leaders and other SLS interns that work outside of Georgia Smart um, and had really fruitful and engaging conversations about sustainability, equity, um, we did development sessions, and a whole range of topics that really brought value to my summer as an intern, um, but also really influenced me just as a person. So that was one of my favorite parts of the Smart Community Corps. Um, so let me think what else. Uh, overall, um, the experience was so much more valuable than I could have ever imagined because of all the people I met, all the mentors I had, 
um, all the things I learned and um, the things I learned about the impact I can have as an engineer, not just in the technical realm, but also in the social realm. So um, Chrissy mentioned that the internships might be uh, virtual this summer. My internship was 100% virtual. So with all of that being said about how much I learned and all these takeaways I had, um, it was all virtual. So I can only imagine that if you're able to do it in person, it's just going to be uh, an infinitely different, but also um, an even better experience, even though the virtual experience was phenomenal. So um, I'm just going to conclude with saying that in the end, I came out of the internship program as a much more well-rounded engineer. Um, I now have mentors in research, consulting, city planning, community building through SLS. Um, and I also got to present my work to the mayor of Woodstock, which was so nerve wracking, but also so rewarding when he gave me some good feedback. So I highly encourage you to apply. This is a really unique experience. And if you have the opportunity to participate, you will not regret it whatsoever. Um, thank you so much for having me, Christy. I do have to say Christy is so helpful um, and will answer any questions you have. So if you have any um, questions about the program or um, what it's like, she'll, she's so helpful. She's great. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Katie. We really appreciate uh, getting an intern's uh, perspective on the program. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, so now let me talk a little bit about the uh, 2021 summer internship opportunities. Um, like I said before, we have um, five projects, Clayton County, Sandy Springs, Savannah, Valdosta, and the Socially Aware Mobility Lab. And as you can see, um, Clayton County is open to uh, Georgia Tech, Clayton State, and the AUCC uh, schools, uh, City of Sandy Springs, um, Georgia Tech, and AUCC. Uh, City of Savannah project will be open to Georgia Tech students, and then um, universities around the Savannah, whoops, sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to go back. Um, The, sorry, uh, City of Savannah um, will um, be in Georgia Southern students, um, Savannah State, um, any school, SCAD, schools around there. Um, the uh, Valdosta project will be for Georgia uh, Tech students as well as Valdosta State students. And the last one, the Socially Aware Mobility Lab. Um, will be for Georgia Tech students as well as AUCC uh, students. Uh, so this is just a little snapshot of our website, and I just want to call your attention to a few things. Um, to the right side, you'll see um, is the Smart Community Core for me. It answers a lot of uh, questions about the program and whether it might be a good fit for you. Um, also, uh, the job descriptions, it will go into detail for each of the five projects and um, uh, detail what the exact job description uh, for each of the projects will be. And then lastly, um, the application, if you click on there, it will take you to Qualtrics um, where you can fill out the actual application. Um, so when you get to the application, this is the information that will be required of you. Um, just to let you um, give you a heads up, at the end, you will need to attach a resume and a letter of recommendation. Uh, when you're filling it out, it will make you, uh, it won't let you uh, complete the application without the resume. You can go back later and um, send us directly to our email, the letter of recommendation, if you don't have it when you're filling out the application, but you will be required to attach the resume um, at the time of filling out the application. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over uh, to Chris Chatfield, who is a manager um, at uh, Serve, Learn, Sustain. Hey, everyone. Um, as Christy said, I'm Chris Chatfield, and I'm the program and operations manager for the Center for Serve, Learn, Sustain here at Georgia Tech. And I appreciate Christy and Katie's um, effusive praise of our relationship. Um, and so I just want to take a few minutes just to explain to you all what SLS actually is and um, why we have this relationship with the um, Smart Cities program. So Chrissy, next slide, please. 
So SLS um, is an academic program. We work with all six of the colleges at Georgia Tech to offer our students opportunities to collaborate with partners in a variety of different areas, community, nonprofit, government, academic, business, um, working on key sustainability challenges. So it's an opportunity to take what you're learning in the classroom, um, what you're learning through your degree program, and actually apply that to sustainability and community engagement. Next slide, please. So we offer five signature programs to students. Um, we have our Sustainable Cities Minor, which is a partnership with the School of City and Regional Planning. We have a certificate program called Innovating for Social Impact that helps students um, research and identify um, social innovation challenges and solutions. Um, we have our own summer internship program, which is where we have the partnership with the Smart Communities Program. Um, we offer uh, an events and workshop series every semester that helps students tie what they're learning in the classroom into real world um, opportunities and challenges. And then we also are deeply engaged with um, our CE Greater Atlanta, which is a UN designated um, network focused on sus uh, the sustainable development goals um, and improving things here in our Greater Atlanta region. Next slide, please. Um, as I said, we are an academic program, so we also offer over 150 courses across all six colleges um, at Tech that are affiliated with our program, meaning those faculty members teach and embed those key um, sustainability and community engagement themes into their coursework. Um, we also have five foundation courses that help students understand the basics of sustainability and community engagement and how that might apply to their degree. And then we also partner with 10 of the um, Georgia Tech Study Abroad programs that focus specifically on sustainability challenges. Next slide, please. So um, in working with faculty and with students, we approach sustainability as an integrated system. So we're looking at all three of the big areas of sustainability, economy, environment, and society and helping students understand how those things intersect um, when you're looking at problems and challenges and solutions. Um, we have a particular focus on social sustainability, so we believe um, you know, looking at the people piece is really the most important part of um, working in sustainability and community engagement. Next slide, please. Um, we do have four um, priority sustainable communities issues that we try to focus on in our work with faculty and students, and those are community health, equitable and sustainable development, green infrastructure, and climate change and energy. And most of our programs you'll find um, focus on one or, or more of these four um, issue areas um, and the intersection of some of them. Next slide, please. So our internship program, um, just to give you a brief recap, um, it's an opportunity for students who want to gain real world experience related to sustainability and community engagement. Um, our students earn course audit credit through the Career Center and also receive um, a summer stipend. So it is a paid internship um, similar to the Smart Communities program. Um, we offer both full and part time internships. Um, and all students participating in our summer internship must enroll in the SLS Internship Summer Seminar, which Katie um, touched on and Christy touched on as well. Um, so both of us have said that it meets one evening every other week for two hours. However, I will add in, and I probably should have changed this, um, that last summer, because we were all virtual, the seminar did meet every week, but only for one hour. Um, and we pivoted a little bit and made it into a um, small group discussion opportunities. So one week, everybody would be together and there would be a learning session. And then the second week or the off week, um, everyone would meet in their small groups with a facilitator. So we did change it around a little bit and it actually seemed to work a lot better. I think students got a lot more out of it as Katie talked about. Um, so I believe the plan is that we'll do the same thing um, this coming summer. So we do, the, the purpose of the seminar is to introduce students to the theories of grassroots sustainability innovation, um, which ties into our relationship with smart communities. Um, and then also gives you an opportunity to sort of reflect on your internship experience. And Katie talked a little bit about that um, in terms of getting to know the other students, getting to know their projects, um, and having um, mentorship type opportunities through that seminar. Um, and then I will add in that um, one semester of our internship program or one summer of it um, fulfills a requirement for the certificate program that I mentioned, the Innovating for Social Impact program. So this is the third summer 
um, that we partnered with um, Smart Communities, and it's been a great partnership. Um, and anyone who's accepted into their program will then be part of the overall SLS internship program in terms of the summer seminar. So um, it's just been a fantastic relationship, and we're so happy that it's continuing. Um, this is just information of how to get in touch with us, our website. Um, if you want to subscribe to our mailing list, that's how we send out information about all of our programming. And if you have any questions about SLS in particular, um, you can feel free to get in touch with us or email us. So thank you. Thanks, Christy. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we want to thank all of our collaborators. Um, again, Serve, Learn, Sustain. Um, we also work with the uh, Georgia Tech uh, Career Services. Uh, the Student Government Association, and of course, um, Microsoft, our funding partner. Uh, these are also our partners from our Georgia SMART program, and they are invaluable to us, and we always want to thank them and recognize them. And this is our email address. As I mentioned before, if you've already done your application or are planning to, and you don't have your um, letter of recommendation yet, this is the email that you can uh, send it to us, or if you just have any general questions about the program, um, you can send it to this email address as well. Uh, so now I'm going to stop sharing uh, the slideshow, and we, we, we can take some questions. Thanks, Christy. Um, so I'm I'm looking at monitoring the questions. Please feel free to uh, continue to type your your questions. We have a, a lot of activity here, so I'm going to group them um, as best uh, I can and try to answer as many questions. Um, so the first set of questions, Christy, is about international students and their eligibility to uh, apply for this. Can international students apply for the Smart Community Corps? Um, yes, they can, uh, but we always um, let uh, you know that you need to talk to your academic advisor to make sure that you are eligible. I do believe you have to have uh, been at Georgia Tech at least two semesters. Um, and then, like I said, just check with your um, academic advisor just to make sure of your particular, um, whether it's F1 or J1. Um, but most. We do. We have had international students in the past, so it should not be an issue. Great. Um, so next question. Um, there's a set of questions asking about what you're looking for in a Smart Community Core, like if, if there's any specific majors or internships or technical skills. Can Can you speak a little bit about that? So we'd like to open up our internship to all majors. Um, not, you know. Um, there's no really uh, strict requirements as far as that goes. Um, so yeah, really just uh, any majors um, is fine. You can look at the individual um, project descriptions and kind of um, see what they're looking for exactly, but we encourage all majors to apply. And then just another question in terms of the application. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about the letter of recommendation? What are you looking for? Who should students be asking for, for letters of recommendation? Um, sure. You can um, get one of your professors um, to do it or a previous employer. Um, either one will um, be fine uh, with us. And just um, someone who can give us a little um, idea about your background, what you've done for them, um, the type of experiences that you've had in the past. Got it. And then another question, and maybe you can speak to this in the broader COVID-19 sense, but a question of, is this an on-campus job or an off-campus job? But where is, where is this job um, and, and how are you dealing with COVID-19 uh, as it relates to that? So um, the first year that we did it, our interns were embedded in the actual Georgia Smart Communities. Um, unfortunately, this past summer, because of COVID-19, we had to do a pivot, and all of the internships um, were done remotely. So right now, um, you know, we would hope that you would be able to be embedded in the communities, but um, we're just kind of playing a wait and see right now. But if we need to, we can pivot, and they will be. Um, done virtually if need be. 
All right, and then just another question on uh, qualifications to apply. So obviously we know that you know any major discipline from Georgia Tech can apply and international students can apply and we even have non-Georgia Tech students that can apply, but what if um, we have some that are graduating this spring? Um, can they apply for this Smart Community Corps? Yes, if you are um, graduating this spring, you, can, you still are eligible um, to um, apply for this program. Um, or if students that are planning to transfer to Georgia Tech um, in the fall or um, that are currently not Georgia Tech students, what is the, the um, application there? Okay. You can apply if you're going to be involved. We would hope that you have been accepted and that you are definitely uh, will be at Georgia Tech in the fall. So yes, um, you could. So I think that the questions for that is obviously, um, if you are a current Georgia Tech student and are graduating this spring, we assume that you can still uh, apply for the summer internship um, right afterwards. If you are a uh, accepted Georgia Tech student um, and, and will start in the fall, um, then you can also plan to um, uh, work in the summer. So the summer acts as the in between, between the, the spring of 2021 and obviously the fall of 2021 of which we expect you to be a Georgia Tech student. Yes. Um, and then okay. uh, uh, one more question on just if, if there's any specific software programs that are preferred or used in the internship or, or any other um, requirements of that. Yeah, um, none that I'm aware of. If the particular project, you know, uses a specific software, then I'm sure that they will provide that to you. But no, we do not require any specific software that you would need to come in with. All right. Um, and then a, a question of, can you just speak to a little bit about how the students rank their choices or how they choose if, if they want to apply for a few um, um, locations or positions? Uh, yeah, so if you go to the application, you will see where um, you can rank the project. So I would suggest that you go read through all the descriptions of all five of the um, projects and kind of have a clear, you know, uh, indication in your mind of which ones uh, you would like to do. And then when you go um, to uh, the application, you can like slide them and rank them in order of which one you want first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And that's for Georgia Tech students. For Valdosta students, they will you will only be able to choose Valdosta. And then um, for the AUCC schools, you'll have the three choices of the two that are um, in the Atlanta area and then also the socially aware mobility lab project. And same for Savannah. The Savannah students can only choose the Savannah project. And then can you remind us of uh, when the application is due and then what happens after the students submit the application? Sure. So February 26th is a deadline. Um, once we have, uh, once that closes, we will go through them and selected students will be chosen to interview um, with the actual communities. Um, we'll go through the interview process and then once that is done, on around um, March 17th or so, we will um, let the chosen interns know. And then once that happens, we'll go through the hiring process and then um, the internship will start on May 17th. And do students usually get their preferred projects or their preferred choices? Um, not always. So we may, you may end up getting, you know, a, a, asked to interview for your second or third choice. Um, it, it, you know, it just depends on um, how many we get in and once we go through them, um, you know, whether you get your first, you may not get your first choice. <laughs> is this a competitive process? It is an extremely competitive process. We get a large number um, of applications and everyone is always extremely qualified. So yes, it is a very uh, competitive process. So we probably would encourage students to submit their applications earlier um, so we can start reviewing uh, your, your application. Yes, the sooner the better. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and like I said, you can go ahead and submit your application without the letter of recommendation as long as you get that to us by the February 26th deadline. So you can go ahead and complete the application and then, you know, work on getting the recommendation before the 26th. Um, we just have a couple more questions on the interview process. So do the students uh, get chosen to interview with multiple communities? Do they just interview one time for that community? Can you tell us a little bit more about the interview process? Um, so you might get chosen um, for more than one to interview. Um, it really just depends on where you come in with the rankings of the, um, the applicants. Um, so yes, it could it you could um, potentially interview with more than one uh, community. And then just a final question on the um, uh, subsidy uh, stipend amount. So this year is eight thousand dollars. Can you tell us a little bit about how 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 that eight thousand dollars is is utilized and and what was done in the past? So last year it was how how much was it last year? Okay, so yes, we have definitely, we've increased it this year. Well, actually each year it's gone up from 5,000 and then last year was 6,000 and then this year is 8,000. Um, so we increased it um, partly because if the students are embedded in the communities to help um, cover the costs of housing and um, supplement that. Um, so um, right now we're still not sure whether you'll be embedded in the community or not, but that money will go toward help towards that as well. Yes, and I think uh, to Christy's credit, we we interviewed our, our past uh, alumni students um, about yes. that statement and it was clearly that that was insufficient for the summer. So we really, again, thanks to Microsoft's generosity, increased it substantially um, so that students will have up to $8,000 um, to use uh, for their summer uh, uh, placement this year. Um, so that's that's basically most of the questions. Um, again, if you have any additional questions, uh, where where do where where can we go to ask you additional questions, Christy? Um, so you can reach me by email as uh, sei2 at gotech.edu, and I'm really responsive. So just send them my way, and I'll usually get back to you quickly. <laughs> uh, and then thank like, you so much. Um, on our website, there is also a frequently asked questions as well. So you can go there and find a lot of the questions that you might have, answers to questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Christy. Um, thank you to all the students that attended and we hope to hear from you very soon for the application. And uh, take care and good luck.